are. Welcome to the 1878 FM podcast. We're all back together. The band is back together. David Vitti is in the house. Sam Avery is there in his bin, or he's all right now. I think he's okay. He's signaling his Were we all back together the last podcast? We weren't back at all last week. Yeah, well, I know that. That's what I'm saying. I know that. I mean, well, I... Dave, if you remember the last podcast, Dave done a, went on mm. very much a Romero on Sunday at the yeah. Tottenham. Came on for 10, 12 minutes and then oh, yeah. with a hamstring yeah, yeah, yeah. injury. If yeah, you remember. I had to go. Early doors, had wasn't it? So, what, well, didn't... it wasn't early doors, Dave. Technical problems meant by the time they were corrected, you yeah. only had a very limited yeah. time left. Well, so. the technical problem, to be honest with you, was more uh, operator error on my yeah, part. Yeah, was that our I'd, I'd actually put in the wrong link to join this, mm. you know, production and, uh, and that was largely my fault. So you can't even really count that as an appearance, I don't think. Well, you still done all right. It was like it was very yeah. much. Uh, it was an Armando Broya cameo against Wolves mm. last week. Mm. Show mm. promise. Ran out of We're time. Singing weird up and having a cod piece on. Why wouldn't you? Mm. Why wouldn't you? That's what I do. Eighty six reference there for. for the Before I was generation. born. Mm. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> yeah. Everybody say, um, careful copyright. Uh, well, that's why I just I pulled out very quickly. Um, <laughs> that's a better cameo than doing the what was it, Cucurella, where he had to change his boots after like yeah. 12 minutes. Mm. I've had that, that with Mike, we Mike a couple of times. Yeah, well, yeah, he was mm. slipping all over the place, wasn't he? Yeah, didn't have a great day. Mm, didn't have a great that. day. Pads, you just returned from Paddy. I have. Um, where you informed me, actually, you didn't eat any cock this time because they didn't have any no. when you went there. No, but mm. that's it. But the, I did. That's where I was when the Everton game was on. I was mm. in a. I was in a gay burger bar in Paris. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it I've been there. Itself. Have you? Yeah. No, I haven't. It just. I, <laughs> hang on. Are you talking about Paris? I thought you went to Powys in Wales. Are you <laughs> no, to Paris? That's a very different bar. Mm. They've got a gay burger bar. I think pa- got, it's Powers, a truck. Powers. It's a truck. It moves around. <laughs> Is it a burger bar? It's like a breakfast bun place. <laughs> Do you know, I keep I keep thinking about jumping into this conversation, but every time I think about it, I decide not to. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I've, I've, there's been two two one liners. I've let slide by. Dave. I was <laughs> literally <laughs> just about to jump in, and then I kind of yeah. thought, no. Do you know what? No. I'm actually no. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna protect uh, yeah. whatever yeah. little I've broadcasting career. career I still have. <laughs> just. Stay away from it. Let it go. Let it very much. I've got a clear. Yeah. I'm let, going. Let it no, go. that, that's where there's a there's a great great burger mm. bar, which it's a gay burger bar. It's mm. tremendous, mm. and it does the cock burger. Unfortunately, yeah. mm. did run out of the cock burgers, and I was mm. very disappointed because there's the death of cock because burgers. the bread mm. isn't like normal bread. It's oh, more okay. like a it's more like a baguette. So oh, you get sure. that rough texture. Oh, the roughness of it. You get that rough well. texture. You're really on. taking it to the, you know. Yeah, yeah. it really yeah. is. And it did run out, so I was disappointed. But once Ashley Young got the first goal, mm-hmm. that sort of, it, you know. It, Set you on it, your way. Yeah, it, 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 it made me feel better. First direct free kick that Everton have scored at Gullison Park since 2018. December 2018. Luca Dean. Luca Dean. 96 wow. minute one against Watford. Mm-hmm. Um Lads, I mean, we've spoke many times this season on here about Everton not winning. So it is only right that we we touch on the fact that we did win a game of football last week and we won it yep. comfortably by mm. four goals to nil. It could have been, we had Five. two goals disallowed. Mm. We missed two really good chances. We could have scored seven or eight at the mm. end of the day. But Dave, it was a very much needed victory, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely much needed victory. It was it was one that I didn't necessarily see us walking if uh if if you if you like for that expression. Um but yeah, it was much needed. You have to fear for Gary O'Neill, I think mm-hmm. at this moment in time uh, without taking anything against our performance, but um to have got done four um off us and actually in many ways the scoreline flattered him and and mm-hmm. flattered them. Uh, then you've got a fear for him, I think, at the moment. But yeah, much needed. Um, and actually, had the derby gone ahead, obviously, in terms of the build-up to that, it was all looking in in quite good form in terms of m- momentum. Um, obviously, we had that win in the midweek, and obviously Liverpool only got um, got held to a draw, didn't they? So mm. uh, it was all looking looking nice, um, but uh, it wasn't to be because of Storm Dara, and then we await the uh, the new date for the fixture. Mm. I mean, Sam Everton scoring four. Having two disallowed um, doesn't happen that often. And um, nope. a, a resounding victory. 
Yeah, it was great. I really enjoyed it. I took my lads on uh, Wednesday against Wolves. Mm. It's the yeah. second ever game he's ever been to. The first game was the Southampton League Cup game when we, we lost mm. on pens and we had 25% possession. And he loved that. <laughs> so I thought, yeah. if we can just draw nil-nil, he'll absolutely be <laughs> yeah, buzzing. <laughs> so we were driving there. And I was, but I, I like Dave said, I, was, I wasn't I was hopeful. I was, mm. I was thinking, this is going to be a tough game, this. And, mm. and Wolves yeah. go forward quite well. And I yeah. thought, you know, I, we could get bounced here. Who knows yeah. what could happen? So I was trying to explain that to me, lads. I said, look, whatever happens tonight, try and be optimistic for the future because if the new owners, if that gets over the line, they'll probably get a new manager. And I was trying to explain all this to a nine-year-old yeah. and he was like, yeah. I just want to experience the atmosphere. And we got yeah. there and he's never been like fully on board, like loving football, like obsessed. Mm. Haven't so you got twins, Sam? Did you, have twins. To toss a, did you have to toss a coin as to which one goes? One of them's not bothered. Oh, okay. he's just, he's just well, not well, that bothered. Means... I don't know which one it is. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, you know what? It's, it's like a lottery when he turns up there, whether he's going to get the enthusiastic one or the one that's yeah. just really not asked. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's like a social experiment, I suppose, because mm. Zach now is very much into Everton and following the scores and stuff, mm. and Ben is not bothered. So we'll see as the as their lives go in different directions yeah. where the happiness kind of, well, you know, I've whether got, it, it, I've yeah. got two boys, Dan. Matthew, he went through about 15 games many moons ago and just went... Yeah, th this isn't for me, it's boring. And obviously I've got <laughs> Zach as well, who's absolutely obsessed with everything and knows everything and, and stats and everywhere. And the lives are very different. Mm. Oh, Matthew's mm -hmm. the happiest kid ever. <laughs> Everton, mm. Once Everton has left you, yeah. he's yeah. the happiest kid ever. You, you will never be the same. No, yeah. <laughs> Zach's a moody little bastard like me. Um, but yeah, there like... you go. There but he loved go. it, he loved it. Yeah. So, so he, he wanted a scarf. So we went around all the stores. It wasn't and he, a he half picked... and half scarf. No, it wasn't no, a wolves. No, 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 no. But he got the blue and amber. You know the classic nice. amber. I was nice. like, this is mm, nice. this is like. There's not not even a club crest on it, just the colours. Mm. Yeah. And he was wearing that, and obviously we we scored four goals. We celebrated six goals until mm. the VAR ruled them out. He was yeah. screaming about the the referee. He was saying, you know, he was yes. moaning about the referee as we all were. I was like, God, lad. And then he's, he, he his first words when he woke up on Thursday morning were, "Should have been eight nil." Because <laughs> it could have, could have been eight nil. He's right. So, so that was really good. But yeah. I mean, the main thing—not to sound like a cliched play, post-match player interview—the main thing was the three points. You know, and we mm. look forward mm. to the next fixture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not what it was, and, and obviously, I mean, Wolves have shown again last night that they haven't got a clue how to defend set pieces. No. They would, I mean, Everton scored three set pieces, and had the other one disallowed for the. Uh, offside or interfering with play or whatever it was that he gave against Mangala, which is a, I don't know, a bit of a mad one that he went to the screen to disallow it, but hey-ho. Um, but I thought, like you said, Sam, they, they went forward. They could have had a few goals themselves in the first half. Second half, they were, they were a non-entity where they at all. They didn't nothing in the second half. But first half, Jordan Pickford had to make a couple yeah. of good saves and, and that kept Everton mm. sort of in the game. And Ped, I mean... Everton don't score that many goals, obviously. Nope. Um, to get four mm -hmm. in that one just took the pressure off a bit, didn't it? Because obviously Wolves have played again and have lost. So yeah. we've got a five-point point buffer. And obviously Ipswich were winning 1-0 on Sunday with three minutes left and ended up getting beat as well. So even though Everton haven't played this weekend, the five-point buffer is still in place. And that's, I think, going into these next three where... It's quite conceivable Everton might get a point. I'm not saying mm. he won't, they won't, but mm. three really took it. I think what it does show is, and I think we've said this loads, is like if Everton can win once every like three games mm. or four games even, mm. the the difference between that is huge. Like last year with the like the glut of wins, mm. yes, it was great. And this time last year we were you know going to win four in a row, mm. and then we obviously we get to the end towards the end of the season win another 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 uh, patch of games. But if you could just win three or four, mm. it shows you the difference because the teams at the bottom are quite poor. Yeah, I think, you know, mm. um, seeing the Ipswich and Southampton are, are, are really struggling. Yeah. Wolves are really struggling, but you've got that thing in your head that they'll probably... They'll get out of manager. it now, won't they? The, yeah, mm. they'll probably sack the manager. The Four players are good. They'll probably bring David Moyes in or someone like mm. that and they'll, mm. they'll, 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 they'll make a fist of it, mm. clearly. So you've got that Leicester... Of sacked the manager and they they can score goals, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there is still that thing of you. What there's there's a, absolutely you know we 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 can't just go oh we'll be all right. There is a, a worry there, but if we could win 
a game every three or four games because obviously mm-hmm. that run we've just come off. Mm-hmm. I mean, Sunday before, I was absolutely, you know, I'm sure we all were absolutely furious after the Manchester United game. Mm-hmm. Just the just the attitude of the players in that game mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. attitude of the manager a little bit as well and the mm-hmm. subs mm-hmm. Were, were terrible and just the... It, you know, it was like the Chelsea game last season when we got beat yeah. um, 6-0 and then obviously that was just before the good run towards the end of the season. So maybe it was the kick up the arse they needed. And then f- not having the derby feels like... It feels like it's just give us that little bit of breathing space mm. just to enjoy this win a little bit more and take mm. that into these three games which are obviously really, really tough. But mm. it just gives you that little bit of breathing room as fans and I imagine as players and as the manager as well. Um, yeah, and so everyone's feeling just a little bit better even though it's just one win. Mm. And it, and it's a team though. It's a team we should be beating. Mm. Wolves yeah. are in the bottom three. They are a poor mm. side. And it's a team we should be beating. And so to win that game and create that space between us and them is absolutely huge. That mm. swing by getting those... an eight-goal swing. That yeah, exactly. And, and obviously, mm. you know, a six-point game as well. So... We just have to keep beating the teams we're supposed to beat, I'd imagine you'd say, because no, most teams are going to struggle against mm. the better sides, mm. especially as there are, you know, Chelsea's in great form and, you know, I'm talking about the teams we're coming up against, but mm. Arsenal are, are, are obviously doing all right. And um, we've just got to beat the teams we're supposed to beat. Mm. Uh, and if we do that, we should be all right. Mm. Um, but that 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 comes down to on the date making sure that we do have a go with those teams and mm. you know we we haven't done that of late so it was nice to see us on the night go out and and destroy wolves. Mm. I, I'm listening to the I've nearly finished it. The Thomas Frank he's just done a uh, interview that high performance podcast. Fantastic. Mm. Says on you know go out to win. Never ever ever have yeah. I said to my team try and you know want to play for a point or you know try to think we go and try and win every game and okay their away form's not great but that's because they do have a go at everybody um but it just showed me that wednesday game that go and have a go at teams yeah, yeah. like you should you'll beat you'll beat most well not there'll be three or four right at the very top you anything could happen but you know if they click they beat you but everton could should never be in any kind of relegation battle because Everton should be able to win ten home games, even with this squad. Mm. I look at the league. For you know, Forest have done great this season, but they're not mm. amazing. But they're in the top six, mm. and you look and go, we finished above them last season. Okay, they've made a couple of good signings, yeah. but this team for me, and I've said it all season, and I'll continue to say it, is far better than what it's showing, and it's far better, I think, than some people give it credit for. Mm-hmm. Or certainly, I'm going. Let me reword it. The, the quality of the player should be good enough mm. to get Everton mid-table comfortably. And I think we've said it before, we've engineered ourselves into a little bit of trouble mm. because of the manager, the way he's picked the team. The players have underperformed as well. You can't absolve them. No, no. But it was great to get that big win because it, it was a massive win. It was a massive win. And <laughs> we go into, I mean, Dave, the next three, obviously, Arsenal away, uh, Chelsea at home and Manchester City away. They look three really difficult games, don't they, on paper? Yeah, and they're three games that any neutral or the bookies or whatever wouldn't fancy us in any one of them. However, I I have a sneaky feeling that there is a point in there somewhere for us. Mm. I'm not quite sure where it is, mm. but I think that there might be a point in there somewhere out of those three games. Um, so we shall see. But, you know, Back to your point, Ped, about the fact that, you know, Wolves are one of those sides that we need to be beating, regardless of whether they're in the bottom three. Even if they're yeah. mid-table, they're one of those sides that we need to be beating, you know, mm. because we need to be uh, beating those in the middle order. You know, you wouldn't, in fairness, you wouldn't fancy us against any of the next three coming up and, and sides of that ilk. But those ones, you've got to try and get some points off. And, mm. you know, if we go into the next three with the right mentality, then there could be something there. You know, they shouldn't fear anybody. No, I mean, Sam, um, obviously, Chelsea at home, I know they're flying at the moment and their away form mm. is brilliant, but with the Goodison crowd and that, we could make it maybe a bit uncomfortable for them. And City right now, I, I watched them on Saturday, they just look, listen, the three games is a, is a big turn for City. They could have they could have won the next couple and they're flying again, but I watched them Saturday and they look so frail. Yeah. Certainly off set plays, and that's, I mean, Everton have scored 57% of the goals have come from set pieces at the moment, so you, who knows, Dave might be right, there might be a couple of points in there, uh, uh, you know, come 
outcome that Manchester City game. But the other thing as well, <clears throat> to ask both of you, but start with Sam, the points I've just said, but also it looks in sort of like the next seven or eight days that the takeover will be complete as well. And mm. how much of a boost do you think that'll be for the football club? Well, I think City do look fundamentally broken, don't they? The, mm. the unfortunate thing is a fundamentally broken City is probably still better than most teams in the league. Yeah, um, yeah. But it, it's not the kind of fixture where you look at with like, well, there's no point, you know, what is it, an expected loss, that horrible phrase that the oh, yeah. Machiri came out with. But it is, I mean, if that was at home, I'd be thinking, just get at them and yeah, it's yeah. not at home, so it's it's going to be tricky. Like, But who knows, because festive fixtures can go all sorts of different mm. ways for a number of reasons, can't they? Because, mm. you know, it always it always throws up a couple of odd results. I think the Chelsea game is an interesting one at home, because I think, I think there's, a, there's a chance to get something there, because I know they're brilliant going forwards and they do look really strong. But at the back, they look a little bit. They, they look a little bit frail at the back. Or there's a mistake in there, you know. And if we just water down that left back side where Cucurella plays, mm. and just make sure we win the toss, mm. then that first half could be uh, very fruitful for us. I thought Bruyer. <laughs> I thought Bruyer looked really good when he came yeah. on um, mm. against against Wolves. And I know it's. I don't want to go over the top, but I think he looks like possibly one of the best players of all time. Um, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Without going, over, over Without mm. going overboard. Mm. Like, one of the greatest but, players that this planet has ever produced. Easily. Uh, I'm, and will yeah, ever okay, produce. I'll go on record and say he's the greatest ever Albanian player to be born in Slough. I, I <laughs> think you might be right. I, I think you might be right. I, I think that's, that's no mean feat. I will argue that point to anybody. I it's don't I think want to argue yeah, against. It, you can't really argue against with, with facts, can you? But mm. I think not going over the top, obviously being serious for a second, is that mm. when he came on, he did look like he had something different about him. Yeah, you know, yeah. he, was, he was running in ways that Dom doesn't run. He took mm. the ball down a couple of times from like just mm. the first time. Yeah. And he looked like and he could beat a player. He ran mm. at the goal. He set mm. up Jack Allison for what should have been two tap-ins and Jack mm. Allison was wearing flippers or something and just like mm. ballooned it into the, into the Gladys Street. Can he play against Chelsea though? No, no. So, right, okay. So that's... that's <laughs> You know, but, that's but my point. Might be available. Yeah, and you know, I I, I just think uh, you know, Dom's looking like less effective every time I see him at the moment, and you know, yeah. for, for a, n- a number of reasons. Just in terms of your your point about the takeover, Baz, that mm. the the uh, I think it will give a boost. Whether it gives a boost to the players, it's not going to give a boost to the manager. I don't think because he's lost. No. You know, as soon as it happens, he's looking like. He's going to be on his way. Although, if he's paid off till the end of the season, if that was me, if you know, know you're going, mm. you're like, ah, well, I'm getting paid anyway. Maybe he'll, mm. he'll be in a better mood. But whether that spreads onto the pitch is another thing. But it's certainly going to give a massive boost to us as supporters, isn't it? Because obviously that that then hopefully is the starting point for Everton Football Club finally just facing in the right direction for the first time in a long time and just being able to then, you know, sort of, put a strategy together to just compete on a way that we should be doing. It just removes that uncertainty, doesn't it? it for all mm-hmm. of us. Because even now, I think, even now there's people out there who'll be fe- still fearing yeah. um, something could ha- could jeopardise oh, yeah. um, the whole thing as we you know as we get closer and closer to it. People, the mentality of, of Evertonians is people are still waiting for something to happen. Um, and whether and that's I a just, pandemic or another world war or just a takeover falling apart. Yeah, or something things. more serious. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hey, just think that it's there. It's just, that's the mentality, isn't it? And the once mm-hmm. we get over the line and once we've got the new owners and then things can move on, because we've just been stuck, haven't we? We've been stuck in like, we're like Ripley in that bloody pod at the end of Aliens, just drifting through space, aren't we? Yeah, that's all. Yeah. That's that's all we are, basically. You know, in our skimpies, while there's a, a cat lying on top of us, effectively. But what do we? What do we suspect will happen? Supposing the takeover, what they reckon is about a week away. Do they? Is that is that what yeah. they're saying? Yeah, yeah. So, so again, in broad strokes, supposing that obviously the takeover happens this side of Christmas, and mm-hmm. let's suppose as we as we we think. Sean Dyche is dead man walking, and let's say that he is replaced in the early part of the new year. Who do you think sees us out for the rest of the season? Ooh, I mean, that's, I mean, because you mentioned boys there before in terms of possibly going to Wolves. Should Gary O'Neill get the bullet? You know, I is, think that's is, the million dollar question, isn't it? It's it's whether I would like to think that whatever is whatever comes next is already. The wheels are in motion because yes. I think personally, and this is my personal view, 
uh, that I personally formate, in, you know, in my own mind, mm, personally, personally, is um, <laughs> I, I think we have to start looking long term and have to get off this cycle uh, that we've been in f- since possibly. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say since Carlo. I'd probably say since Carlo was appointed. In many ways, is mm-hmm. we have to look, start looking long term, and start believing in ourselves as a club and believing that the manager that comes in is in there to do a job uh, over many years. Because if you appoint another David Moyes, if you appoint another someone mm. like him, you are just you are just creating another small cycle of we are just trying to stay up. And yeah. we're not thinking about what comes next. And I think at some point you have to put some roots down and say, no, we have, we're going, you know, we're going for this. Mm-hmm. I was talking to my dad about this. Like, you know, my dad's 72. He's seen, you know, ev- everything at Everton. And even he was like, listen, if the worst becomes the worst this season, mm. you still have to just go with it. You can't yeah. just keep saying, we're just bringing a manager in to stay up. And then what? Like he's, you know, he he was at, he was we were talking about even he was at the mind of like no no, we have to start looking ahead, and that plan has to be put into motion and wherever that plan takes us, so be it. But we can't just go. We have to stay up. We have to because the reason why for me, most of that was because we've got to get the stadium built, haven't we? We've got mm. to have the mm. money to get the stadium built because that's our future. Well, the stadium's built. Mm. It's built now. A new owner's coming in. We have to start looking at that long-term plan of a manager coming in, creating something at the football club with the director of football and taking us forward mm. and, and and you know, starting to enjoy football once again as a long-term thing. It wasn't so much that, Ped. It was, it was more to do with the fact that just whether, and I totally agree with you, you know, it's about having somebody who is a long-term proposition, somebody who's going to put down some roots, somebody who we see actually managing this club for the next two, three, five years, that kind of uh, period of time. Mm -hmm. It was just the fact that if the Friedkin group come in imminently and they Mm -hmm. feel that Sean Dyche isn't for them, whether they, whether their choice of number one target would be available now or whether it might be somebody who's available in the summer, let's say, and they need to have a, shorter term you know a, a, a short term plan to see out this season that's that's all i was sort of intimating i, I don't I'm, I'm not i'm not suggesting that Moyes would be brought in for somebody like him now as being the man who is their long term uh, prospect but would you I just wait? Don't to... so would you wait dave would you wait for, if you're if you whoever you want isn't available now would you just wait yeah. for sh- and see out the season with Sean Dyche <sighs> Uh, I don't know. Is 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 the quick answer to that? I well, really don't. Thanks for coming, know. Dave. <laughs> um, I, I I don't know. I don't know whether I don't know whether that's the right thing to do, or whether yeah. or you know whether you do chop, and because you know the alternative also is is not necessarily the right thing. You know, do you put in somebody for for the next few months? I don't know. You know, and and obviously mm. the costs associated with that, the cost of dispensing with is- Sean Dyche and his team when we've got limited yeah. resources. You know, I I don't, honestly don't know. Is that a well? Let me just. Is that a? Is that just a get away from Sean Dyche, or 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 do you fear continuing with Sean Dyche is going to keep us towards you know the bottom of the table, or or are you thinking we need to get away from this this style of football or this human being? I think we all I think we all agree and and that we need to get away from this style of football and this mm. sort of mentality and and obviously the parallel that you you drew with Thomas Frank before from a winning mentality is what we're after. Mm. Um but I suppose my my caution in all of this is the fact that chopping one for yeah something else which isn't quite right continually over and over again isn't always necessarily the the best thing. So in terms of, well, if if the question is, do we need a new manager to take us forward? Yes, undoubtedly we do. Do we want that new manager in January or do we want that new manager in the summer? I can't say for certain which is the best way to go about that. I I think it'll be Graham Potter. Okay. Personally, I think he's one who's available at the moment. Thomas Franks looks like he's he's the kind of character who could easily manage Everton, whether Mm. Everton are going to pay. 
don't know. But I think that's the point Dave's mm. making, isn't it? If you've got a Thomas Frank and it's he's not available in the summer and he's your number one choice, do you sacrifice your number one choice for your number two choice? Mm. That's that's mm, that's the thing. But, but I, that's who then it comes down to who's yeah. the number one choice, I doesn't think, it? Yeah. What about you, Sam? Well, I think the big thing is not because obviously I think most of us want Sean Dice out of the football club as soon as possible. Um, if we were 12th right now, I'd be less concerned about getting him out the door as quickly mm. as possible and maybe he could see us through to the end of the season. But the big thing kind of hanging over my head is that when the next manager comes in, whoever that may be or whoever that target may be, who are their targets in the transfer window? Who do we buy in January? Mm. If we do have a little bit more wriggle room with PSR, is mm. that something Kevin Thelwell's looking at, big picture, and he's looking at, okay, this manager's coming in. So, because we can't just be wasting transfer windows again and again. Because, yeah. you know, the, even the last one, we brought in a couple of players who I think, you know, s- someone like Njai, who we like. Yeah. Um, but there's still no pace in the team. There's still no, there's just no, we, yeah. we're just a very slow moving football club, mm. uh, football club and football team. <laughs> yeah, so, you're, you're right the first time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, um, no, it's a really good point though, isn't it? We have got a big window coming up that is gonna ne- we're going to need to help us for this season. And it's Kevin Felwell, who's obviously not signed a new contract either yet, so we're, we're not 100% sure what it, where, what's going to happen with him. And of course, with, you know, with Baz mentioning Graham Potter there, you've just, Dan Ashworth's just lost his job at Manchester United. Yeah. You know, would, is that a dream scenario? Do we go and go, you know what? Actually, this is a great opportunity to to go, we can get the guy who had massive, you know, good success at Brighton with the guy who was his boss, bring them mm-hmm. together um, and and move forward with a complete new regime. You know, does does that does that make sense? Yeah, but I mean, but but we we're talking about what you you might suggest and what Everton Football Club might be thinking, <laughs> and the two are not always aligned. You know, I mean, yeah. it just feels like a deja vu situation talking about the January transfer window coming up. Mm. And of course, this time last year we we're saying, well, let's just hope that they've already you know identified their targets. They're literally yeah. ready to go in. We used the the Boxing Day sales analogy, didn't we? You know, knowing that you want that pair of jeans and you want that top or whatever, you already know exactly where it is in the store. You go in, you run it, you get out. But mm. they don't do that you know no. and and so i can only i can only hope as we all can that obviously the the introduction of the friedkin uh, family and their regime means that at long last we've finally got people who are professionals at running a football club that know how these situations work and actually think forward in terms of major decisions and don't squander these things like the previous regime has over and over and over again mm. yeah We'll see. We will see, obviously, um, Arsenal away at the weekend's a tough one. But this time next week, hopefully, we'll have closure, certainly, on the takeover. Mm. And then where they go from there. Um, because if Everton lose, if they did, if worst case scenario happened and Everton lost the next three, which they could easily do, mm. we'll have won three games out of 17, yeah. which is absolutely disgraceful. And therefore, yeah. you'd have to look at... at Change um, a change, a managerial mm-hmm. change, because other clubs who have will, who were in the same boat will be looking. Mm-hmm. Like we've just said, Wolves, mm-hmm. you know, and and we've already seen Leicester. They've jumped. Wolves maybe about to. West Ham have won five or whatever it is, and Lopetegui still under a bit of pressure there. Mm-hmm. So other managers who are around now, who Everton have targeted, mentioned it the other week. Sergio Conceição, mm-hmm. Graham Potter, they, David Moyes, if he is on it, although. He's a bit of a difference than the other one. Um, you know, even Eden Terzic, who's been linked with Evan as well, those managers who are available won't be available for very long mm. if someone mm. wants them. And if Everton have made mm. a decision and, and say Everton have identified someone like Graham Potter, then why should he just sit around till Everton feel comfortable with what they're doing? So results will dictate it. But I think the biggest thing is to take over, but get that sorted and then yeah. we can all move forward. Right, gentlemen, what have you brought me? That isn't anything to do with football. Silence. I've got something. I've got something. Brilliant. But Dave, Dave, do you want to go first? No, I want you to go first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, because yeah, because the, the, the slightly awkward pause there would imply yeah. very much yeah. that as soon as that 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 question landed, I was yeah. thinking, come on, Sam, come on, who's, Sam. Who's done their own work? Said. Okay. Well, I've got, listen, I've got some as I've, well, but Sam, go on, go on. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. So here's my question. Right. If if all of a sudden the NHS offered every person in Britain 
the chance to have cosmetic surgery for free. Yeah. Mm. You got a voucher through the post and you yeah. could redeem it for any plastic surgery, cosmetic surgery. What would you get and why? This is actually a really interesting question because I was thinking about we've we've mentioned this a few times. I we mean, have like mentioned people this. getting procedures and stuff. And I don't is it like a, it, is it this always an comes back to my hair. Yeah, I was gonna it? say it is this an to... internal psyche thing? Uh, of a, of a, of of you know of men going just j- going into their forties as we all are. That's we all are. Yeah. We all are. Just yeah. just starting that that so, journey. Just, well, I'm, yeah. I'm just hanging on. So that's all right. Hanging on to what? <laughs> the <laughs> the <laughs> Judging by Dave's clock, that Dave does it. The forties, yeah. Uh, well, actually, do you know what? I've been I've actually been thinking of something because because this is I, news. No, what? no, I, I not not that I would actually get it done. But I've mm. had a little look at a few. So first, so I went to the dentist a couple of weeks ago, mm. and you know it was the first time being the dentist since COVID, mm. and mm. I was really worried. Yeah. So yeah. I went in, and actually, I got pretty much a clean bill of health. Mm. I just needed mm. a big clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I needed, I needed a little, a little filling on one of my front te- yeah, teeth. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would like one of my teeth just whitened a little bit because yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. darkened mm-hmm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. and obviously doing this and stuff, you do get a little bit self conscious. But what I actually do want is, because I've noticed this. So have you seen the way Mo Salah's had his hair done? Mm. Oh, right. yeah. He's basically Beautiful. just had these two bits yeah, yeah. Right, that's filled what in. I would do. And that's what I want. Mm. So my I've got a I've got a devil's peak here here. With those peak, I mean. with those peak, whatever. Devil's some sort me. of peak. <laughs> devil's peak. The peak. Devil's peak. The peak. Devil's yeah. dyke. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah, maybe. Right. So I would actually like uh, the, these two bits yeah. filled in. <laughs> So I've yeah. got like a clean line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, I know what's going to happen. Yeah. It is going to start getting a little bit further back of course and further back. Mm. Yeah, it's exactly. Mine's well mm. on its way. So, and I do have like, I do grow my hair a little bit over just at the front just to cover to one cover of them. It, so, yeah, it, yeah. so it's mm. clean. I yeah. don't like that idea of having your hair all back and seeing loads of fod. Mm. Um, so it's I would actually, horrible, if, I had, if I had the money... <laughs> If I had the money right now, I'd actually get those two bits filled, filled in mm, and yeah. just have a clean line. Yeah, no, for... And I'd have no problem doing that at all. Just it's cause... only, surely, for all of us, it's only like, it'd only be sort of like hair and teeth, surely. Hair or teeth. Because I'd have ref- mine filled in, to be honest. But then you do think, oh, would they get, not necessarily turkey teeth. No, I wouldn't. But I'd... would you get, I mean, my teeth are all right, but yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking, would you, do you know what I mean? But it'd probably be See... the hair. To be Go fair. on, Dave. Go on, Dave. See, I, I actually, I got my teeth altered since we've been doing this podcast. Not right, in a yeah. turkey kind of way. No, clearly. But, but we have, as you, you, you're quite right, Ped. We have had this conversation before. Mm. And, and again, to your point about when you do things like this and you're living in a new sort of visual world where you spend a lot of time looking at yourself on screen and you do get more... Um, uh, more self-conscious i suppose mm-hmm. of, of, mm-hmm. of little imperfections should they exist and so yeah i had those um those brace things put in in the last in the last year and they've, they've straightened yep. all my teeth up which is it's been been a good thing i mean other than that you know i mean looking at myself here i don't think there's anything else i could improve on <laughs> no 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 I'm, <laughs> no dave, i was thinking absolutely. that dave to be fair I, yeah. would you? Mm, I'm, yeah. I'm really impressed with the level of like sort of self-reflection and uh deep kind of like this is kind of what masculinity is like in 2024 mm. isn't it where you're yeah, honest yeah. I, I wasn't expecting this i was expecting ridiculous answers because my answer was going to be <laughs> i'd get i'd get loads of fake muscles pumped into my arms <laughs> 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 Well, like, actually, yeah. this is quite a quite a sensible and, and, yeah. and considered conversation, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. akin to something that you might have on Loose Men or something. Yeah, I'd say so, that, yeah. And, uh, when we start that podcast, which I think we should, because um, why not? Mm. But uh, yeah, Loose I mean, men. Sam, go on then. Really, what would if you were being serious? You're not going to have fake muscles pumped in. Just eat more protein <laughs> and do some weights, but <laughs> oh, and, and that'll, be, that'll be good for you. He's but, a busy man chasing around one, busy... one or maybe two of his children. Well, you don't know. Just... And putting on all sorts of talks. They're going on tour, mm. doing workshops. And also, busy. let's not forget his musical career as well, because he exactly. has a new, single, new, single, song. new single out this yeah. week, which oh, is, yeah. is a you work of genius, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's it really is. Christmassy type Christmas of ditty. I really, There'd really be a like lot it. of beeps, though, yeah. for the Christmas number one, wouldn't it? In all It'd be mainly beeps, wouldn't it? That's, that should be the name of the song, Mainly Beeps. Yeah, mm. that's not um, bad. I don't know what I get done. I, I've given up on my hair. I wouldn't get hair done. That'd be ridiculous. And we've talked loads of time. If I suddenly has had hair, you'd be like, "Why is Sam's twin turned up?" It'd be dead weird. <laughs> Very I, much I, like your kids, yeah. I, me, uh, 
I mean, I, I used to worry about wearing glasses, but now mm. the great thing as you get older is the 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 glasses cover up the bags under your eyes, that, that mm. the rim at the bottom. Mm. So actually, if I take my glasses off, I look older. Less so women. maybe yeah. actually that's the answer. Mm. Get the bags yeah. under my to eyes. Be fair, kind of fix. Yeah, yeah. And to be fair, Sam. Deidre Barlow is being dead sound to lend you their glasses. <laughs> Mate, I've got a wig that my kids got me for Christmas <laughs> last year, and I put it on with these glasses, and it, I look like Deidre Barlow. And my kids thought they got me a proper nice present by getting me mm. a wig. They didn't think it was a joke. They, oh. they said, are you going to wear it on the school run? I said, no. They went, why not? I went, because it's a wig. And <laughs> so I said I'd wear it once on the school run, so I'm going to wait till it's pouring down. With, I should have worn it in the mm. storm, shouldn't I? And it mm. could have just flown off. Yeah. So they're blowing <laughs> away. I mean, they got away with it. That'd have been amazing. You got away with it. That'd have been amazing. Um, I was looking up at some. Did you actually yeah. answer that question? Yeah, I did. I said I'd have... Oh, so you just copied your... me? I said to you, there's two choices, isn't it? Clearly, everything else is all right. So mm. therefore... <laughs> I mean, more than okay. all right, Barry. More than all no. right. Oh, you know what I mean? I'm okay. Yeah, I walked not, off. You know... I wouldn't need, you know what I mean? I'm all right. I'm, Maybe I'm, that's what he needs to walk to. Yeah. Wouldn't you have There's that? no point in me being taller. I'd have to get stretched didn't we, we, didn't we talk about this the other week? You <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah, you know what what style? We talked about this the other week. I'm not, not sure whether, what we talked about on, but did you ever have kids in your schools that had like the metal braces on the outside of their legs because they weren't yeah. calipers? They yeah, weren't mm. discussed this. Yeah. It was a big thing. And it seemed to be a big it's thing gone. in the 80s. So it was white dog people. That's kids had their legs yeah. broke on purpose. Yeah, to make their legs longer. No, I, I don't know why it went. I'm not having it. I wonder. But don't could you? But 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 Ped, don't you also remember? And 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 you might be because you're very slightly younger than than I am, and yeah, you might sure. not remember this. But was there also? I sort of whenever I think about those calipers, didn't they used to have like collection boxes outside of shops, right? Yeah. And it was normally a kid with caliper, like and like made of plastic, right? And it's not not like, a real kid. Not a real kid, like a plastic kid with calipers down its neck and, and possibly with a dog there. And there was like a little Definitely slot a in the head and you could put yeah. in coins like it was a yeah. collection for, I don't know, was it for, for to pay for the calipers? Or, I, I don't kids. know what it was. There's there's a load... it, made. it wasn't wood, it was like, like hard plastic. plastic. There's a load of kids yeah. now, isn't there, who are like six foot five. Six foot five. And they're know. like, well, mm. I got... where'd you get your legs? Well, someone put money in a slot. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> like a ceramic we've slot. We've got food banks now. Then we used to have leg holes. Yeah, Half the NBA. Half the NBA banks. in America yeah, are paid for by those little yeah. slots. Yeah. Thanks to Peter people's genera generosity. Mm. People like Peter mm. Crouch. People like that. What a weird thing. Uh, yeah, it was weird. It was weird. And I, why didn't you get yours done? <laughs> I was like, I'm all right. <laughs> okay, I'm just... Like I, you've always I, said. Other people have an issue. I don't. I don't have an issue. I'm a man. I saw this thing the other day where you could actually get these insoles, which which would 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 boost your height. Not yeah. that I need to, but uh, you no. know, if, if anybody was of that 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 mm -hmm. you know need or requirement, um, you could they could boost your your height by about two or three inches, inches just by yeah. putting stuff into your into well, your shoes, which is an interesting should. concept. Women have chicken fillets in the bra to enhance themselves. So mm -hmm. why wouldn't men have it in the? Uh... Yeah. The problem is if you add them. And you, you went home with somebody who didn't know you, you'd be like bloody Renny and Renata when you took them off, wouldn't you? There's another, there yeah. There's another up to date yeah, reference there. About three foot eight without them. Or the I plane. mean, the other, the other thing as well is that, you know, on that front, and Fancy you think, well, if, if, women, if women can enhance themselves with chicken fillets, then men could also do the same in that department, you know? And obviously, if you were in France Sock, still, like, Sock. like absolutely, if you're in France like Ped's just been to, then it would be another sort of cock enhancement in terms of down the pants, would it not? It would be. <laughs> cock in the shock, as Sam just mm, said. No there. cock, yeah. Until so, uh -huh. so you get home and it's not very good. Cock a van, that's a different thing, isn't it? Mm. Um, I'd see, like, a... a it was just, I was looking through some stuff and I seen funny bits of like the strange rules of society, it was called. Mm. So just pick the couple of things out that I, we do. Hang on, whose question was that? Sam's. Do you Sam's. Want to, like, save off with his question. Oh, no, 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 no I, 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 I've, 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 listen, I've got a question if you want it. No, go on then, Dave, go on. Go on. Okay, my question is, is this, mm. right? And this isn't just like something that I've just made up because I didn't actually did fully do my homework before. But anyway, okay. like, just, just go with me. Yeah. Do, do, you, do you think, or true or false, yeah, the world or indeed the seaside would be a better place without seagulls? Ooh. True. That's true. Because don't you think they ruin true. everything? I don't know what it would do, would do to the food chain. I'm sure they provide some. I'm not, I'm not bothered by that. No, me neither. Mm -hmm. So let's get rid of them. And wasps as well while we're here. Yeah, wasps. They, they wasps ruin everything. Wasps yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But seagulls, seagulls and wasps. I mean, one yeah. significantly bigger than the other, but Clearly. both equally annoying on a sunny day Imagine by the seaside. Imagine if wasps were the size yeah. of seagulls. Mm. Well, seagulls See, that's the, the size question, of wasps. isn't it? What would you add that have seagulls the size of wasps or wasps the size of seagulls? That's a brilliant. That is a brilliant question. Uh, actually, seagulls are just the size of them themselves. Yeah, and just leave wasps where they are. Yeah. Big wasps. No one wants. No. Them. Just don't know. annoy them so. anyway. As a little. Oh, and, God, having big well, ones. That's that is nightmare fuel. That isn't it. Can't mm. just, well, instead if, of getting rid of the seagulls, can't we just give them like a designated area? Just stay over there, lads. Just put all like Wolverhampton or somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> wherever, wherever. <laughs> but just so mm. there's a like this is a seagull-free zone, lads. You're not allowed mm. here. Also, mm. security. When cameras. did they decide that they weren't gonna just be by the sea? Come in, land. Haven't when you know what I mean? Yeah. When did one of them go. We've been getting tricked here, lads. There's mm. loads of food mm. over food. here. Please follow mm. the food. It's actually more chippies if you go further in. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. To the city centre. Yeah. And they're less yeah. expensive. And why did they uh, yeah. decide they like chips? I don't know. Like well, chips. It's also it, it's also along the same lines is is I often wonder, right? Who first decided that ducks like bread? <laughs> I mean the, I know that's and what's absolutely mad about it is. It's not part of their, di no, their digestive not. system. Can't just, do it. You're supposed they, they, to give them like seeds yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Rather than their world, their world is nowhere near a loaf of bread. So who, who, who on earth thought that was a good idea? And isn't also, that just like us? It's like giving like... quiche to geese, isn't it? It yes. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Hang on, it doesn't it, make any sense. But it's sense. not any worse than us drinking cow's milk. Well, Surely yes. Who, who, who first it thought it that was a good idea? Tooth, indeed. I can't, I'll, I'll never get over that we it's drink it's another milk. animal's milk. It's so. just milk. It, I'll just never get over it. No, but that's, uh, to me, that's mad. You've been brainwashed. No, you no, have. You've you're been, drinking starch water. You've not been brainwashed. Be. But the ducks with the bread is the, is the maddest thing ever. Yeah, mm. give this. I mean, next they'll be feeding it bloody toffee crisps or something. But what else, Dave? <laughs> what was your other one on the back that was of it? Because you Be went before you. No, 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 no. no, no my, my, sorry, my, my point was was actually what Ped just said about the about the drinking milk thing, which I think is oh. is mental. And I wonder okay. if there's any any animals yeah. uh, whose milk you you prefer not to drink. Uh, Sam's got his hand up. <laughs> go on, I Sam's mean, got to go. Go I, on, Sam. I, I've got to go to a kids' Christmas play, which will probably make more sense than this yeah. conversation. Cool, okay. <laughs> so okay. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to bounce. Oh, but uh, right. I'll be think I'll be thinking about this all day. Enjoy. Nice Enjoy. one. Think See you later, what... fellas. Right. Sam's disappeared because mm. he's got a Christmas play. Well, he to he go just explained that. Right. He I know. Just it's good. That. It's good. It's good mm. that he's gone. Mm. Um, just uh, like I started before, but a couple of mad rules in society. Right. Why do we clap to show our appreciation? Don't you stop and think of it? Why? Mm. Why you know is what? that? Why is mm. that good? That's actually weird because I was me missus was watching. Wolf Hall the other night, which is the most boring program in the world, by the way. Edgy, though, it's, it? it is, but it's boring as hell. Mm, yeah. You know, Henry the Dark, Henry the Eight. On it's got honest to God. Apart from having six wives, it's shite. Literally shite. All right, you brought a new religion in, big deal. Shite. Yeah, we only brought it in because yeah, so you could get six wives. The knob, someone else. That's why. But uh, there was a bit in that, and they were all clapping, and mm. I was like, because someone had done something, like probably killed someone or something. Yeah, and I was like. How far back does clapping go mm. to show the appreciation? But of... why is it clapping? Just like, no, you stop and think. Yeah. Because this comes but... to me, you know, when we, we mentioned, mm. someone mentioned the pandemic before, and when we were allowed out Dave? for an hour yeah. mm. to have a walk, yeah. I mean, it's just when you think back, it's berserk, but hey-ho. Mm. And we were out one night on a Thursday. Oh, yeah. And so we stopped, and Memorable. people were outside hitting oh, the wooden, wooden spoon mm. on a pan. Right? Yeah. Which the first week I sort of got it, yeah, but as it, it went nonsense. on, bringing pans out yeah. and clapping. And that I, I remember stopping because we did and we clapped yeah. everywhere. And I'm thinking we're clapping here. But it looked odd that yeah, people were outside yeah. hitting a pan. Mm. Yeah. But who said going like this? Is a but sign you know of what? You, but you'll probably find that it, it stems back to something uh, sort of instinctive in so much as who also decided that a smile means a sort of a happy thing no it's but you know happy. what i mean yeah because yeah, actually yeah. when you when you when you think about animals in the animal in the animal kingdom which is obviously the best place for animals yeah is that so. the smile and the bearing of teeth can be two mm. very different mm. things you yeah. know one can be a very angry and aggressive response and the other can be a very warm and friendly response yeah you know but who determined or indeed how did that become what it was why do we clap to show appreciation why do we shake hands with people there's probably a, there's probably some origin in why the shaking of the hand it probably means something in terms of i don't know but it's 
these have been around just, long, these these been around longer than we have barry has this podcast just latched into into a 1980s kid show like um with what? Johnny Ball or something, mm. as we explain why things oh, happen. Okay. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, it's just, it's mad. And the other thing is, and this is a mad one, yeah. right? And I've never understood this, okay. but I always do it. When you walk past someone, yeah. why do you sometimes say, sorry? If you, yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, oh, sorry. I apologize oh, for everything I don't know why, country. though. My like, miss, even yeah. if you haven't done anything no, wrong, my sometimes you go, oh, sorry. Because you've both like she stepped the same. Apologizes but... for everything, or like someone's died. You go, oh, I'm sorry. You're like you didn't kill him. Mm. Like, no, no, no. Sorry no, for like... their loss, aren't you? I you get mean... that. But walking past someone, if you've both took a step to the right, you oh sorry or something. Yeah, we all do it. It's, but it's, I think I think I think that's a purely I think that's a British thing though, isn't it? Yeah, I don't it think that that's necessarily yeah. an international thing. I think that's a British <laughs> thing whereby we are so overly um, courteous, apologetic, yeah, courteous, and apologetic. Yeah. To everybody. It's weird, isn't weak, it? Weak, I call mm. it. Which? Weak. Weak. Oh, because well, you don't apologise to anyone, I do you? I don't, know. No. <laughs> Imagine our surprise, Dave. Well, well, I'm not being funny. I'm walking down the street and some fella's doing a jig in front of me because he doesn't know what, which way to go. I'm not mm. saying sorry for that. Get out the way, dickhead. That's what I say. And if someone's <laughs> died, why am I apologising? Why mm. am I apologising? sorry for their loss. Why am I sorry, though? They, that's, you don't, I didn't do anything. So if you, if so, if someone dies, choose better family, words. you don't think, oh, I feel, I feel for them. Choose better words. But, but actually, but you know what, but you're, but, but you're right. We do use the word sorry, but to say something, you know, along the lines of, I, I, I appreciate, not appreciate your loss. I feel for you. I, you know what I mean? Actually yeah. makes more sense than the use of the word sorry, which does, is an apology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you think it's about just it, language, you isn't it? Think about it. It's bad language. That's it. It is, yeah. though, isn't it? I am sorry for your loss. Because actually, the whole thing of sort of thoughts are with you makes more mm. sense, mm. right? Yes. Because that's mm. sort of showing concern and compassion and empathy you're, you're right, and all Dave, those sort of you're things. You're right. Yeah, it's so strange that a man of your youthful age would be so wise. Mm. It's mad, isn't it? <laughs> it, was the, it was the braces on the teeth that finally done it. It's just, do you know what? It, it, it not only straightened my teeth, it straight, straightened my head. I yes. think so. I think mm. he's just smashing life mm. now, isn't he? Because mm. of the the, um... the genius of the of the dentist whilst fingering his teeth. Mm. Yeah, seeped so, into did, him. Did, 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 did the reckon the gum... say sorry at any stage? He was wearing well, gloves at the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> So he, he, everything's all right if they're wearing gloves as well, if they're wearing mm. gloves mm. giving consent no one has to mm. no one has to mm. ever say sorry if you're wearing gloves you don't have to apologise mm. <laughs> <laughs> I now nah, listen fit. it feels loo- I, I, that's what he said to me but, I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest that I don't think <laughs> no. I don't think that, that wearing gloves is um, gets you out of apologising no no, no no it's not a prerequisite for a no for a <laughs> for anything no yeah, for anything but really got a fit yeah, and that's with OJ. We saw if the glove doesn't fit. Well, that's simply just because he mm. bent his hand. <laughs> he bent his hand. He just done that. Made he the done claw. a claw. He done the claw. I meant that won't go on, even though everyone could see. Yeah, it go on. He just had his hand like that, mm. and the entire well, the glove doesn't fit. Okay. So he kind of done it. Yeah, interesting. What a way. You to seem finish. to have what, uh, something to talk about. So go on. I finished. I've just asked you questions. No, I thought you you before we went to Dave. You you seem to be going. Oh, I was uh, with these questions. Oh, the okay. questions are being placed. In okay. the arena, being discussed, Dave's battered them away. We move on. Okay, so you've got nothing. Well, I mean, else I mean, to I add. mean, bat, bat, battered them away sounds like I didn't want to take part. No, you answered. Much... You fully oh, answered. Oh, oh, oh no, I no, see. No, I've got nothing. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't want it to sound like it, I dismissed. It feels them. like you want me to say something. No, I thought you had something. I did. I've just, I've just constructed a bleeding no, 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 conversation. That's, no, that's not constru- I thought you had a question. I've just given two questions out. I, I, I feel, I feel a little, I feel a bit like I'm mediating here in, in some kind of domestic scenario. I thought you had a question. That's no. all. Okay, no. fair enough. I mean, I, I thought when I asked the two, that would have qualified, but that's fine. I missed those moments. We've just gone through about clapping. Why do we clap? And about why do we say sorry when we dodge people? Oh, were, they, the were they questions? I just thought you just they just come to your mind. My head's going to fall. I thought you had something deep and My meaningful to talk fall. about. That was it. Not a, not when Dave's got to go. I'm weird about. Listen, I, I I want you. Do you know what I want you to do? Right. Go on, Dave. I would I would like you. I would like you to shake hands, and <laughs> and I'd like you to smile, and also hug, and also say. And this is this is a way of wrapping it up. I want you to yeah. both say, "I'm sorry." 
to no, each there'll other. No, there'll be no sorry. Or, no, or, no apology. There'll be no, it's or, not an apology. An apology is not needed in this case. No. No. Not needed. Not at all. I think this is useful dialogue. Mm. There's not enough of this, Dave. There's too much. It's a challenge. Mm. There's too much of like people going, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry." At times in you can. Voice. At times you can be abrasive, and you can find the middle ground without going. Mm. I'm sorry. Mm. It's an overused word. You know what the to... problem with the middle ground is? What is you it? Get it from both sides. Right. On that note, I don't know what that we means. Are going. I don't know what that it's means. A, it's a Jewish proverb. If you stand in the middle of the road, you get hit from both sides. There you go. And on no, you road. wouldn't. You would not that if not if, not, car, not if it was it, it the cars would be driving it down clip, the middle. Yeah. And clip, also, yeah. if it's a dual carriageway, you'd only be hit from one direction. Exactly. Well, I mean, not, not I mean, not one direction. I, I mean, like say, one direction. Harry like, nothing to do, no, 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 no. Absolutely. You know, getting no. hit in Home Chapel or somewhere. Yeah, let's leave. Dave, it have you got your car back? You, I think everyone wants to know. This is the question. I've, I've, I've bought a new car. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, it's a share or not? No, well, for another day. It just feels like there's a lot of new things in Dave's life. That does recently. let's not go there. No, no. <laughs> it just feels like it's going to be a very merry Christmas. It does feel like a very merry. <laughs> Christmas. Hey, do you, know do, you know, do you know what I've got? Do you know what I've got? Go on. New, new gloves. Ooh. If the glove fits. Ooh, new Dave, gloves. Dave, just for the purpose of the podcast, as we finish, sure. claw your hand and see whether you can get the glove on. Hang on, hang on. Hang Just on. let's see. Uh, I know, that's the left one. Well, either of them. By, by the way, these these aren't new gloves. These are actually just old gloves. I just remember they've been in, in my desk since COVID. Well, that's okay. Why have you got gloves in your desk? Now raise your hand. I don't know. No, because, no, 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 is, it, no, do you know what? It is weird. Hang on, I'm, I've, I've not finished yet. Right, <laughs> no. so, right, it's on. On, yeah, right. Now, now try to put what? the other one on by clawing it. Don't ever straighten it. He, he never, ever straightened it. He just like clawed it and tried to get the glove over it. <laughs> this is not great if you're just listening to no. the podcast. So make a claw of it. See, you're yeah, but hang on. You're struggling. I'll yeah. tell you what, from that angle, my hands look massive, don't they? Yeah, you they have do. got the biggest they hand I've ever seen. I mean, they look, they look huge. Are they, I mean, if, are they foam finger gloves? <laughs> if you think is that? I'm not being funny, but they look like you're doing the gutters. No, but actually, do you know what I mean? If you, I never thought about this before. This is a good game, game that everyone can play when they're next on yeah. a Zoom call. Is yeah. actually if you get the, if you get the distance right in terms of where your face is as opposed yeah. to where your hand is, yeah. you can make your hands look huge. Look at look, look, look hey, hey, comparison no, with my face. No wonder she was happy in the picture. On that can I note, say one thing, no, go. one thing before we go. If you were on a Zoom call with someone you didn't know and they pulled a pair of black gloves out of a drawer, yeah, would you just be a little bit worried? Just a bit perturbed. Like just the, slightly uncomfortable. The next thing they bring out is cable ties. Cable ties. <laughs> <laughs> and then a silencer. That wouldn't be arsed, but the silencer, they'd be over quick. No, I'd be arsed off the silencer. On that note, let's just leave it there. Tremendous I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do a really massive hand wave goodbye. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> Dave and his big hands Dave are now waving. Hands. Right, let's leave the podcast there. Oh we will be God. back next week. Thank you for listening. Like, subscribe, oh. do all that good stuff. Thanks to Dave. Thanks to Sam. See you later. Bye. Bye.